Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be working on this lovely bike. This is a kid's 20 inch Huffy and um, we're gonna try to fix it up. It shouldn't take too long. And if you're not familiar with this format, this is basically gonna be uh, almost unedited. We'll be in here, you'll be, you're on my GoPro chest mount right now and I'm gonna put this uh, camera on. You'll pretty much see what I see and we're gonna try to get this bike in a decent condition. Uh, there's a story behind this bike too, why I'm working on this bike that's worth almost nothing. But there's a story behind it, so uh, I'll tell you about that as we get going. Okay, there you go. You're locked into my camera onto the chest. You can see my arms and it is hot, just like last time, 30 degrees, approximately the same as last time. I was working in here today and it was 35 degrees Celsius. That's probably like 90, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. It was so horrible, so hot. Uh, and what I was working on, by the way, which is why I don't have my workspace here for, for my top here, is I'm trying to repair my batteries for my lawnmower, one of my batteries, one of my cobalt batteries for the lawnmower. So this area is kind of, at least up to here, is off limits. This is my only area now. <laughs> So um, anyway, so this is the bike. Uh, the only thing I've done so far is I added air to the tires because I did that. I did that earlier because I wanted just to see how long, how long they're going to hold air for. And uh, so far, they have been holding air for probably what time it is? It's a ten forty one. It's been at least six seven hours. So that's really good. So I don't think we're going to need to replace the inner tubes. But uh, yeah, the story behind this bike, you know, I'll, as I'm working on it, I'll tell you the story. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and show you something else I noticed is this wheel. Check this out. Right. It's extremely bent. So I'm going to go ahead and, and also this chain is way too tight. You can almost make a sound out like a, like a guitar pick anyway. I'm, and it's obviously extremely rusted. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking off the wheel. Uh, I'm going to try to bend that back somewhat straight and uh, take the chain off to try to clean it and then of course remount it correctly. And by the way, one interesting thing about this old Huffy is there, I noticed right away there's no front brake. And I was like, oh, there's no rear brake. Oh, because it's a coaster. I haven't seen that in a while. But yeah, it's a coaster brake and it actually does work. All right, so let's go ahead and start taking off this back wheel. Um, Let's play guess the size game. What do you think that size is? 14 millimeters? Let's try. Heading over to my wrench area. I don't remember if I mentioned it last time, but I'm not super, super proud about how I have it organized, but at least this little area of metric craftsmen are pretty well organized. So 14 millimeter. No, 15 it must be. Go for the 15. Yes, okay. So the story with this bike is, is well, first of all, I grew up in the Port St. John, Titusville, Cocoa area of Central Florida. That's over here on the coast, on the east coast of Florida. And so and I'm back living here again, by the way. I've been here for like a year, I guess I've been back here in the Central Florida area. Um, so I'm on some of the Facebook groups. I'm on one of them called like Port St. John. There's a lot of them, of course, but I'm on one of them, one of the Port St. John ones, which is the city that I grew up in from like, I don't know, age seven or six until 14, 15, something like that. So a lot of my childhood, I grew up in Port St. John. I know that city pretty well. Anyway, so I follow the Facebook group and somebody said, a woman posted on there and she said, my son had a spike sickle stolen and this is what it looks like. Um, if anybody's seen it, please let me know. So I just wrote and I was like, you know, thinking as I saw it, I deal with a lot of old bikes. I'm on Facebook Marketplace like all the time. Maybe I can get a free one. So I wrote that in the message. Uh, as a reply, I said, maybe I can get one for free uh, if you don't find it. And... You know, I figured I'd just kind of look around and see what I could find. And so, of course, it never came up because, you know, stolen bikes almost never 
get recovered. And so like a week later, um, she sends me a message and said, hey, if, she said, hey, if you, if you do come up with something, let me know. And um, I'd be happy to have one for my son. By the way, the, the boy is seven years old, I think she said. And um, so then I started looking and I, I happened to pause across this one on Facebook Marketplace and it wasn't free, it was $10. Um, so I wrote the person, I said, hey, this is what the situation is. Would you be interested in donating it? And I'll try to get it fixed up. And the uh, person who was selling this, oops, this is, it's a coaster break, so you have to take this, uh, I don't know what it's called, like a torque bar, I'm just gonna call it for lack of a better word. You have to take that off uh, before you can take the slide the wheel out. Looks like it's just gonna be a Phillips head screwdriver and a little tiny eight millimeter maybe wrench. Let's grab a, maybe nine. Let's go with a nine and a Phillips. Screwdriver's right here. Uh, that is a long one. Where's my, yeah, here's my good craftsman number two Phillips. Anyway, I told this, uh, this seller um, the situation and would they mind donating it and to my delight they said yeah you can have it so I picked it up today actually nope smaller must be eight actually my original gut feeling was correct I said eight but I grabbed the nine let's go with the eight there we go I picked it up today and that's the situation so I'm trying to get this in riding condition and then we'll give it over to the boy and uh, he'll have his bike back. Not his bike, but a bike. Now, I know you're looking at this and you're like, man, that kid might be disappointed a little bit looking at this bike. You know, it's, it's old. I didn't even talk that much about the bike yet, but I mean, obviously it's very old and just, it's a low end, it's a huffy. So, whoops, here goes our nut and dropped it on the ground. Um, but by looking at the photo that she shared, his bike was already something like this. It might've been a little better cause I don't think it had a coaster brake and I saw it had like uh, at least one brake lever. So, but it was in a similar category. I don't think this might be a little bit of a step down but I, I hope it's not too much. So um, anyway, she did say that it was stolen from her backyard on the post and somebody said like, you know, you sh I don't know, something like you shouldn't have that in the backyard. And she had said that, well, I don't have anywhere else to store it. My house is too full. It will be, in, you know, it's like it's impossible to, to store it indoors. So it has to be in the backyard. And um, I guess it, their family is too big to, to have the bikes indoors. Anyway, so reason I'm mentioning that is because I'm not going to do like a really full restoration on this because it's going to be out in the back. It's going to sit out back anyway. Um, I think I read that she's going to chain the bikes at least together, whereas before, or chain them to something, I'm not sure, but whereas before, I guess they were just sitting back there and somebody went in the backyard and actually stole them, which is horrible. But my point with that is, is I'm not going to, uh, you know, do too much to this bike. I don't want to spend too much time or too much money on it, being it's just a backyard bike anyway. But I do want to get it going. I, I want, you know, I love cycling. It is like absolutely my favorite thing uh, to do. I just, I love riding my bike. I like seeing other people riding their bikes and being happy. So, um, especially kids, it's so much fun. Like when I was a kid, I would ride my 20 inch. This is, by the way, is it a 20 inch? I mean, I'll say BMX, but obviously it's not a real BMX bike of any sort, but I had bikes kind of similar to this and I just loved riding them. And I'm guessing this kid, whoa, it's all wet in here. Look at that. Um, I'm, be I'm getting, betting this kid doesn't care what kind of bike it is really, as long as he's riding. That's how I was. All right, the reason I'm taking the tire and the inner tube off is because this is so, wow, look at that. I don't know if you can tell by the camera, but I can actually see it's like, this is super wonky. Um, the reason I'm taking it off is because I think, I don't think I can just adjust the spokes to get this right. I'm gonna actually have to manually bend this. 
So uh, also, while I'm at it, I'm gonna, I mean, this bike also obviously has been living outside, but I'm gonna try to get some of the water out of here. I mean, it may just come back if it's left outside, but I, I don't know, I don't like all the water here. So, and by the way, you might've seen the this in one of my short I just did today, which this is so cool. I am so, I'm just, this is a small diversion. I'm just too excited about it. This is a, look how cool and look how good it looks. It's obviously CNC machined aluminum, then anodized. This came from AliExpress from China, but don't judge on that because, you know, I've seen a little bit of people being like, oh, you shouldn't buy that, you know, that junk from there. It's not, it's actually, some of this stuff is of course, but this is, I, I mean, I haven't used it yet, so I should be careful what I'm saying, but this is not, you know, cheap junk. This is like nicely machined stuff. And really, who cares if you buy it on AliExpress? Like everything almost comes from Asia nowadays and China chiefly. So um, I'm excited about it because what it is, I didn't say it, <laughs> what it is, is it's a cable pull hydraulic disc brake caliper. So right now on this, it's gonna go on this bike. This bike has the traditional, very cheap, single uh, piston movement, uh, cable ca uh, pole calipers, which always squeak. That's my main complaint. Uh, they don't stop super good either. And so I'm gonna, I've heard good things about these. So um, I'm really excited to, to put them on and give it a shot. So that'll be another video. Anyway, anyway, I'm off track. So I'm gonna try to straighten this out uh, manually. Now, I saw a video a long time ago and my brain remembered it, that it existed from like what I consider the original, I mean, I'm sure there was more, but for me, he's the original YouTube bike guy. Wait a minute, are we missing a spoke here? Something that just looks a little weird. These two go straight down. Oh no, no, it's okay. Okay, it's all good. All right, all right. This is a two two cross. So you cross one, you cross two. It's called a two cross spoke pattern. No problem. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, bike man for you. Bike man for you. That's like was my first introduction to YouTube biking. Uh, first, I'm just gonna put this in the truing stand just to kind of take a look at it from this angle and stuff. But. Uh, bike man for you. He did a video. What am I doing? He did a video, um, about this, about how you can easily, I guess. Whoa. What am I trying to do? I need to, I need to think rather than talk for a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Ah. okay. So you loosen, you loosen this. And then that brings this uh, gauge up. That's what I'm trying to do. Anyway, Bike Man for You showed uh, how you can um, fix a bent wheel that so far that just spoke adjustments aren't going to be enough. So I just did this so we could see how bad it is. Look at that. Yeah, that's extreme. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where it needs help. I think what's happened is right around here. Oops. Wait a minute, the whole thing is shifting a little bit. Okay, gotta make sure it's sitting down in the, in the grooves, right? Okay, so I think right around starting here to here, I don't know. I think it's bent that way, but let's look at it from this perspective. You, I've seen, uh, I've seen, I think the park tool guys do this. You can stick a screwdriver in here if you just want to work with one side like I, like I do now. So that's the thing you have to figure out. Is this wheel bent this way or is it bent this way? Hard to tell sometimes.
I think it's been this way. I'm not totally sure, but I think there's something that happened. It got pushed this way. All right, let's go with that theory. Anyway, bike man for you. He uh, he's retired, I think, from YouTube. He had a really cool channel, like over 10 years ago, for sure. And I remembered about this video he did showing this, and I went back and looked at it today. Maybe I shouldn't use a permanent marker, like something less permanent. Um, I do have these. I love these things. I use them all the time. These paint markers, I can put a link to it, the Amazon link to it if you want. They're not that expensive and I just, I use them all the time. I could use red to blend in. I think I'll do that. Okay. Sorry, it's a little bit dark over in this corner of the shop. But anyway, so I went back and reviewed his video and uh, so I'm gonna try to use a method he showed to um, let's switch to this side to straighten this wheel. This is kind of the long boring part of this video probably. Getting this wheel straight, but yeah, like right around here I'm just making a mark with my um, paint marker. It's really hard to see. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea. I can see it though. So what I'm doing is I'm marking the area that needs to move. So in my opinion, it's a big area. It's like a third of the wheel. It should go that way. And if we do that, The good thing is, is yeah, if we do that, this wheel will be better. The good thing is I was getting ready to say is that this is a coaster brake hub. So there's no, no uh, pad here. So it doesn't need to be that accurate. Uh, thank goodness because yeah, it's far, far from good. Anyway, so where are my marks? My, here, here's one of my marks right here. And here's my other one. So this area, uh, now I'm forgetting which way. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. It's it's a little bit hard to talk and actually do things at the same time and not get mixed up. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna mark it on the other side. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll keep it on the side. Don't get more confused. This, where the marker is, needs to come towards the marker. Okay, we need to go so I'm going to keep it like that. So basically, oh, I, you know what? This is actually Bike Man first. You said this. Like I said, I rewatched the video. Okay, okay. I know, I'm getting crazy here. I'm going to do something else. He said, make your color your down area. So I'm going to see if I can almost wipe it off. I'm actually going to go with white, even though it stands out too much. I'll put it on this side. Whatever. And the other side is here. So I'll make a mark on the that side. He said that way you put the marker on the side that it needs to go away from. That way when you're laying it down to bend it, you know which way. So what it means is, I know this is I'm not explaining this super well today. What it means is this, from this marker here to this marker here, no, from this marker here to, oh, to this marker here. Needs to go that way. We need to push it down that way from an upward position. Actually, it's even more. It's like half the rim. It's exactly half the rim, isn't it? Yeah. This thing is just so bent. All right, let's just start off with what we have. Okay, so basically now we can lay the wheel down like that. And we know from here to here needs to go down. So what you do, first of all, I'm just sitting this on the ground, not ready to do anything quite yet. You need some wood. He called it the IBM because I rewatched the video today. I don't actually have 
any cuts that are quite the right size. This one will be useful. You need two uh, two by fours. He called it the IBM. I don't remember what it stand, stood for. So basically what he did is, I hope you can see this. You have this and you'll hang it over. You'll hang it over and then you'll literally just push it down. But I need another one on the other side for support. So I do have some more two by fours. They're just not cut and I don't want to cut them. So I'm just going to, it may be super long, but it should work. Lately, I've just been always keeping two by fours in my garage because I just use them for so much. What was I doing today? I, I even did something today. I can't even remember what now, but I was, uh, yeah, I was doing something with my two by With one of these two by fours, I can't remember, I can't think. Anyway, yeah, they're super handy. Okay, there, that's pretty much the setup. And this is crazy, but you actually do this with your feet, so. I'm trying to turn the camera. This is an extra. <laughs> this is, by the way, the first time I've done this. So uh, I hope I don't screw it up too, too much. So you put your foot like that. Oh boy, this is weird. This is crazy. Oh boy, I'm scared. I'm nervous. Okay. This does not seem good. Bike man for you told me to do it. Okay, actually it doesn't feel too bad now. So now I'm, my right foot, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm pressing down and it is bending. Definitely it's bending now. There's gonna be a certain amount of spring back. So you kind of gotta feel it. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. I don't know how much I did, if any. <laughs> this is crazy. Let's check it out though. All right, back in the stand. Oh my God, it's not good. It's still bad, okay. Come on, bike man, for you. Oh, did I? Okay, let me switch it around. This would be consistent and keep it the same way. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, so this is where we were trying to push it that way. Oh, I think, oh, we did. We did push it that way, I think. Let's get closer. Oh, wow, actually, it's, okay. Now this part is hitting here, okay. We actually did push it because look, this area between this white line and this white line are now, oops, this white line and this white line. Oh, no, no, no. It's still, it still needs more. I'm sorry, I had it backwards. Okay. Yeah, they still need to go that way more. Well, actually around here, it's pretty good. It seems like just, oh man, this thing is so messed up. Sorry, I'm not talking right now for a minute. I'm trying to concentrate. Oh my God, look how much, like it's such a huge gap. This is the worst part. I, I think we even proved it. Now the worst part is a smaller area. So I'm going to mark that. Here's the really bad part now from here until about here. So it's smaller. This is the worst. I know the kid's going to be like, what's with all these lines? All right, let's try it again. Where that triangle there is, is the worst. So let's give that a push down. So I, I basically put the marks where you start and finish near the wood and then just press down there. So, all right, 
Like I said, this is the first time I've done this technique. I feel like I need something to hold on to um, whilst, whilst, <laughs> while, while I'm doing this. So I moved to the bike stand and the bike over so I can put my hands on something while I'm getting up here, kind of steady myself. It's extra hard too, because I'm also like tilting my camera down. So, all right, here we go. Hey, whoop, we're up. Okay, we're up. Okay. I'm pushing down right on the, it's creaking. Okay. Let's see what we did, if anything. Uh, no, this side. Okay, so this was the worst part. It's still the worst, but look, it's not touching anymore. Okay, it's, it, that was an improvement. It's still bad though, but let's push it a little bit more. We're making, we're moving the right direction, I think. I'm sorry, this is probably the most boring <laughs> video you've ever seen. Oh my gosh, I'm sweating like crazy. I don't know if it's because I'm nervous about standing on this wheel of a seven-year-old boy. The seven-year-old boy's wheel <laughs> that I'm supposed to give him, or it's just hot, or both. Okay. This is such a weird thing. He said in his video he's 220 pounds. I'm way less than that, so I shouldn't be nervous, I guess. <laughs> oh my, okay, it's creaking. I don't like all that creaking. All right, I'm pushing. Oh my gosh, I just saw it move like a lot. I don't know, that might not be good. Makes me quite nervous. All right, so stick it back in this way. Let's see what we got. Okay, there was our bad area. It's still bad, okay. Hmm, hmm. I'm gonna try it one more time. I'm sorry, I keep doing this, but I'm gonna try it one more time. I'm gonna give it a really good shot, really good push. And if that doesn't work, maybe I'll try just working with the spokes tension. Okay. Okay, now we're making some progress. Look, it's getting further. The other one is still much further, further, but I think we made some progress. None of the, I already checked earlier, but none of the spokes seem crazy bad. That one's a bit looser, you can tell. That's right where the problem is, but if I tighten it, it's actually gonna make it worse. I'd have to tighten it on this side. Yeah, everything feels rather okay. Now it almost seems like most of this is consistent. And now it almost seems like, almost seems like it's okay now, look at it. I mean, it's not great. Oh my God, that's not great at all. That's not good. Okay, maybe we can do better. Let's, it, it, we're making progress, so let's keep trying. It's a little bit, I think it's almost moved a little bit. 
here. I'm just going to make a little circle to indicate that. I am just sweating like crazy. This is not good. All right. Uh, this time on, yeah, I'll do the same thing. It, I think we're making some progress, so let's keep trying. The more I move this over, oops, the more I move this, this board over, the more leverage I should be getting. Um, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, we're getting better. Look, it's not touching now. It was touching there without anything else different. Still not good, but we are making and we are getting better, which kind of makes me want to keep trying. Really, we're getting a lot better. That's me adjusting it. Let's try now with the spoke tools. I'm going to pull this side. So we still need the same thing. Where, where this area is, it's still too much this way. So I'm going to take the... I'm going to tighten these and then loosen these and see if that helps a little bit. I hope it's the same size. As my little red one, I don't know what number two it's called. Let's see. Seems to be a common size. So first I will I'll go ahead and loosen this one. When you're facing it from the outside, it's lefty loosey. Good, it's the right size too, by the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a full turn. That's a lot. Oops, I just kind of screwed that up. Probably right around there, but I kind of let go of it. So I'll do a full turn on this one too, which is a ton. So by loosening this, it should allow it to get pulled that way more. You know, I'm loosening the reins on this side. Okay. Even just doing that might, might make some difference. I can... Yeah, some of these are pretty loose. So let's go over on the other side and tighten down to pull it on the other side. So we're going to pull these two. So facing them from the outside, from the tire side, then it's standard um, right. Ooh. Kind of scares me when they're kind of stuck like that. There, we did turn it a, almost a whole turn. Okay, same thing over here. I didn't lubricate these, I probably should. I'm tempted to turn my fan on, but I don't want it to screw up the audio. Um, yeah. Okay, this one's tightening down a little nice, more nicely. Okay, there we go. Almost a whole turn. Hey, that's getting better. It really is now. Check it out. It's not a great wheel for sure, but it is improving. No question. I might just stop here. It doesn't need to be great. It's, uh, you know, it is what it is with this bike and it's a rim brake, so it doesn't matter that much. I could, I can try, maybe I'll pull this just a little half turn more. It's, it's tempting just to keep working on it, but I got to remember, you know, this is just a, a little kid's bike. He's just gonna, you know, have fun with it. I don't need it to be perfect. 
So I'm tightening this one up just a little bit. Tighten this one. No, I'll leave that one. Let's see, what do we look like now? It's not great. Um, not great, but a lot better. It was already okay. It wasn't rubbing or anything before. I think we're going to call that good enough for now. Oh my God. I am just my, I don't know if you can see my arms, but they are just horrible. All right. Cause we also, I'm kind of limited on time. Uh, now it is 1115. Oops. There goes the IBM. Let's put these away. Yeah, it's 11:15. Uh, I want to get this done tonight, so I can move on to these uh, kind of more fun stuff. All right, so let's clean this tire and inner tube up a little bit. Grab a rag or two, whoops. I'm just really glad that the inner tube seems to be holding air nicely. Kind of surprised by that. Oh, and by the way, I actually <laughs> got another free bike. Oh, I did also tell you about um, what happened with the other, the next bike, the last hot summer video, <laughs> summer garage video I did, the last video on the channel. Um, so I actually rode the bike around a little bit around the neighborhood and just kind of goofed around. I, I don't know, probably have like 45 minutes riding on it and never had any issues with it. It actually was like totally fine and it held air. Never did the tires lose air at all, but I posted it up, I think for $40 on marketplace and didn't get any interest at all. That was obviously way too expensive. Um, and then I went down to like 30 and then eventually 20. Left it at 20 for a few days and still nobody was interested, even at $20. I think it was just because of the rust. I didn't know this, but like people really, I think anyway, I think people really just do not want to see rust on a bike. Not to mention they probably saw that I messed with the gears and they just, you know, I don't know. There just seemed to be no interest in a $20 bike that looked like that. Now I actually started thinking about it and I'm like, like I said, I'm like always scouring marketplace. I saw other bikes with a little bit of rust or more, and they also were selling for like $20 or 15 even. So I guess it's a lesson learned for me. If a bike looks that bad from the outside, uh, it's not gonna sell. So I should never pick up a bike like that. Anyway, so I posted it on my, um, well, I, I created a Facebook group for like rides. We do monthly rides here in Titusville. And uh, it's pretty fun if you're in Titusville or, the, or this area uh look for titusville bicycle tours that's our facebook group and we do last friday of the month we do a ride and i sometimes throw up like mountain bike rides and gravel rides in between that so um yeah we get like i don't know between 15 let's say 12 and 20 people usually show up uh very easy slow rides we never do anything like intense anyway though what was I saying with all that? Oh yeah, I put I put it up there and I said, hey, does anybody want this for free? Like nobody's buying it if you just want this. And uh, a woman from there wanted it. So I gave that away to her today actually. And she's gonna use it for like a guest bike or something. So that's cool. Um, yeah, not gonna pick up one of those again though. All right, let's put this, this tire back on and stuff. Uh, let's see, it needs to go this way. So I'm just thinking about the tread pattern uh yeah which way does it go i think this way is there any indicator yes there is it says rotation this way so this is correct um but then i was riding my bike uh last week i guess just a normal little ride around the neighborhood and whatnot and i saw a schwinn on a trash pile it was like a Schwinn cruiser style bike and it looked pretty good. And I was like, whoa, okay, let's see. Um, so I stopped, took a quick peek at it. It was your typical like neglected, hardly ever rode type of thing. So I knocked on the door of the house and I asked, you know, throwing this out just to make sure it wasn't like just 
I don't know. You know, I don't want to, you know, accidentally steal someone's bike if they just like park down by the road or something. Although I could see it was not at all in riding condition. Two flat tires, handlebars were rotated 360, so the cables were all screwed up. But, and it was extremely grimy, although like hardly ever used, like ever, ever probably. So I took it and uh, spent about one hour. Actually, I started making a video, but I was just, I don't know, I didn't like it. Uh, anyway, I spent about an hour fixing it up that evening and put it on marketplace and sold it the next day for 50 bucks it was a super easy fast uh sale and that was cool that, that that's the more so what i learned from that is that one looked nice because it, it was like new and it hadn't been stored outside apparently it had been stored inside so although it was like dusty and grimy it was just like indoor dust so um i think people see that and and plus it was all original like it shifted i got it shifting perfectly it was a seven speed uh, I got it shifting perfectly. Everything looked really good. I had it posted for 70 and like I had three people write me, but like the first one or maybe the second one, they asked, would I take 50? And I was like, sure, why not? You know, it was, it was free. So for me, so why not? Um, the couple picked it up, took it home, no problem. So that is the kind of flip Come on. There it goes. That's the kind of flip I like. <laughs> now this tire is so loose, I have to make sure it's actually on the bead correctly while I'm pumping it because it can like be off. It's, it's so loose. I'm just kind of going to mess with it. It's so loose, it would be very easy for this to pump up, like not totally on the bead. So anyway, made a quick, easy $50 on that. Uh, that one also, I didn't do anything to. I didn't, or I mean, I didn't have to put any parts on it or spend any money. It was really just cleaning and adjustment and a little bit of wheel throwing as well. Oh my God, look at that. Just as I said it, I, I don't know how I missed that. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> this tire is not on the bead. <laughs> Holy moly, that's horrible. How did I, oh my. How did I not see that or feel that? That is crazy. All right. Unbelievable. Yeah, this we this tire is so old. It's just uh <laughs> it's almost like too big for the rim. It is the right size, of course. Get on in here. There. Okay. There. I got it. I think I got it locked on there correctly now. And I should be able to just pump it back up. Hopefully it stays on there. Okay. Oh yeah, I think I was saying something earlier. I didn't complete my, my thought. What I was saying is, I hope... No, nah, I finished the thought. What am I talking about? All I was trying to say again is that I hope that I can get this kid his bike get a bike going for him and he can have fun riding because riding bikes is awesome that's better yeah i think we're good now Woo. all right not going to stick it on quite yet because i want to get this chain off Oops, of course we're gonna to need to break it. <laughs> what am I doing? Thinking I'm gonna pull it right off? Uh, yeah, we gotta break this chain. I'm gonna to try to clean it up. Whoa, 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 let's spill those. Uh, although I do have a one speed chain if there's something majorly wrong with it. If it turns out to be twisted or anything, I have an old one speed uh, that I can use. I'm sure this has no kind of no, no kind of quick link. About 
90% of the time I get this kind of chain breaking correct, 90% of the time. The other 10% of the time I somehow screw it up. I'm not super confident with my chain breaking abilities. Usually it's good. See, the thing is, is you're pushing the pin, if you don't know, you're pushing the pin of this link through the holes and you want to bring them all the way to where that side of the pin, where it used to be here, is hanging out of this side, but you don't want to go all the way out. So it's a bit of a feel thing. So when you feel it getting tight again, like that, I think, then you stop. So it's a bit of a feel and if you go too far, you screwed it up. If you didn't go far enough, then you can just come back and keep pushing, see how that is. I think that's what you want. So I think that's gonna be good. So then you can just bend it a little bit and then they come apart. So if you mess the feel up, uh, it's, it's a pain to put back. All right, so my idea is I'm going to use Evapo Rust on this. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if Evapo Rust is appropriate for chains. I'm not sure. Uh, here it is. I have so many chemicals up here. So many chemicals. I bought this a long time ago, so let's go ahead and use most of it up, I guess. There it goes. I just didn't want to use this because I think it was pretty expensive. <laughs> I didn't want to use all of it, but there you go. That's all the rest. So my thinking is with the Evapo Rust, obviously it does good a good job of getting ready to rust. Uh, that's true. But what if it does too good of a job and it actually like, you know, damages the metal, makes it the dimensions a little bit different? Uh, that would be bad, I guess. I can't seem to get all of it underneath. I should be able to though, why, why am I saying that? I, you, you can do that with a chain. It just takes a little bit of work. We want it all to be on a flat plane, like that, easy. And then it should pretty much all be able to be under, there we go, under the liquid. That's what I wanted. Okay, now what do the instructions say? How long are you supposed to let it sit? One to 12 hours. So, uh, I don't want to wait one to tw tw one hour even. Oh, I'm just sweating like everywhere. Okay, well let's just let it sit for however long we're gonna let it sit and take a look at the bike itself. Huffy Rocket, Rock It, not Rocket, but Rock It. This bike looks super old. I had it flipped over earlier and I was looking at the serial number, but I couldn't discern the year based on that. But this looks like something I would have rode when I was a boy. So could this really be from like the 90s or is it from like 2005 and it's just been left outside? I don't know. It looks like something I would have rode when I was a boy. Although I will say just as like a personal story or an antidote, what got me really started doing bike mechanics is when I was like, 12 years old probably my dad taught me some basic bike mechanics and we built some bikes up from the frame up like BM, like bmx style uh we like found one frame in the trash i remember i think he came home with another one i don't know where he got it and we would just uh kind of piece together these bmx style bikes which i was really proud of at the time and uh so that's what kind of got me started when i was a teenager young teenager and i always wanted to like race bmx but i never did I did go to, this is a kind of embarrassing story. I went to the track like one time with my home built BMX and I was so slow and even like scared to go over the bumps and stuff. I was like 12 and I never went again. That's a pretty sad story actually. <laughs> because uh, since then my daughter who was four at the time, we were, or maybe five, we were going to the BMX track and she was having a great time and riding the whole track. Not super fast of course, but she could ride it. So I easily could have done it if I just would have stuck with it longer is what I'm trying to say. Looking for that screwdriver that Phillips had, uh, screw, number two screwdriver I had before. Uh, where did I place that? Did I put it up here? I didn't put it back where it goes. That's not good. So I'll just have to use a different one. Anyway, I'm just trying to take this. Uh, this used to be a chain guard. Obviously it's no more, so I'm just removing that junk there we go i'm gonna leave these tabs i had considered 
removing them but then i'm like well if i if i grind them off i'm gonna have to touch up paint it and it's just gonna look probably more obvious anyway this bike is just you know it is so old and so faded uh, there's no use trying to make this look particularly nice i just need to make it functional that's the goal uh the good thing is surprisingly oh yeah i was starting to say these cranks spin smooth they spin okay i'm not going to get into it but at least there's no play they're not moving or anything they're they're very solid they're a little a little grindy but i suppose they'll be okay uh, i noticed the kickstand was loose i think it's just this bolt needs to be tight tightened so let's go ahead and do that where are my things like I'm usually not that bad about misplacing my tools. Oh, here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm putting things in the wrong place. I always use this set of Allen keys. I know it's not the most convenient or the best, but I use these all the time. I've got these like when I was like 20 probably, and I've used them so much. Eight millimeter. I'm just going to tighten it down. I don't know. It should be adjusted pretty close to correct because it was working before there we go okay kickstands tightened down um sadly the saddle is really bad but i don't have anything i can do about that i don't have another saddle i mean i'm gonna take the tape off that's just flapping around that's even worse i would say I'm going to take the tape off. Maybe I can get some of the gunk off. And it's just going to have... Oh, yeah, it's pretty ugly. Oh, man. This is a huge scar. Like, all this is gone. Like, this used to be... That's why they put that big piece. It's horrible. Let me see if I can at least get the stickiness off it. Uh, I don't know. I'll use some 409. I wish I had a better bike and a better saddle for him. Um, but... Who knows, maybe if I if I can find one in the future, you know, or something, I can get him something better. But hopefully this will be good enough to get him back on the road. Hmm, it's pretty sticky. Hope he can even see me. How much time have we put on this? 55 minutes. Okay, I don't want it to go a lot more than an hour. Um, it is ugly and sticky. Maybe Goo Gone. Do I have some Goo Gone amongst all? Yes, I do. Goo Gone. I like this product. So it smells like citrus and it gets, it gets st sticker type residue off really well, typically. So, oh, ouch. Hit my funny bone. Uh, so let's see if it can work a miracle. Put some on my rag. You can get it at the Dollar Tree for like $1.25. I've been using this stuff for years. Yeah, it's coming off pretty good now. Pretty good, but not totally. There's like some white. Let's see if we can lower this a bit. There's like some of this white stuff here. Let's add some more. Okay. It 
sorry this is very boring watching literally watching a man scrape goo off of a saddle but we pretty much got it on this side at least it's ugly obviously it's ripped but it's not sticky anymore that's the thing i wanted i didn't want him to sit down and have like goo stuff on his shorts <laughs> if it's torn that's one thing heck even on my other bike over there my gravel bike i have a, a little boo-boo on my saddle as well so that's not such a big deal but oh look at this this one's, oh, this one's even worse how did i not see that it was so worse oh look at this look at oh, this is horrible yeah i don't really like using tape and stuff to patch saddle tears like that it's not good what is all that it's horrible look at that oh i think i know what happened so yeah somebody put the tape on it and then dirt got under it and so now it's like dirty <laughs> it's like dirt uh oh what am i trying to say it's like dirt goo now <laughs> Gugan is saving the day though. Great product. Pretty cheap too. At least if you get it at the Dollar Tree. What do you think about the Dollar Tree? I know not everybody who watches this is in America and it may just be an American, maybe Canadian thing, but Dollar Tree is like super cheap. It's more expensive than it used to be. It used to be everything was a dollar, literally. Everything in their store is a dollar, but starting like last year, now there's things for a dollar 20, like everything almost is a dollar 25 now because all the inflation and so now they have like a five dollar area too and i don't blame them from a business perspective but um yeah it's kind of a bummer from a shopper perspective it's definitely gotten a bit more expensive i go there sometimes but i also kind of have mixed feelings about dollar tree on one hand it's like where else can you go and get things so so cheap you know what's true this is another embarrassing thing to say my sunglasses that i wear came from the dollar tree <laughs> and they look i think they look cool but anyway um it's also like I, feel, I i like it in that sense i can actually get things for a dollar like like this gugon like if i were to buy this anywhere else it would probably be more that said there are there is some stuff there that's not such a good deal it's like super small package and you can actually get a cheaper walmart or other other places okay there i think we're done with the saddle back to its original not good condition but at least it's uh not sticky anymore um but anyway what i was trying to say with um Dollar Tree is on one hand, yes, it is cheaper, but it's also kind of like feeding this like super throwaway mentality. Like you just buy the cheapest junk you can and then just throw it away. I, I kind of don't like that. And like 90% of the stuff in there is that. It's just so much plastic stuff, especially around the holidays, like the Halloween and stuff. It's just like all this junk. This is obviously designed to go, be used once and straight to the trash. So I kind of hate that aspect of it too. Anyway, off track. I think our saddle is as sorted as it's, sorted as it's going to be. I was thinking about taking this off, but I'm just going to leave it. Just leave it. I think we're pretty much done. I could go over it, I guess. Why not? While I'm waiting for the chain to kind of clean up, uh, I'll get another rag. Um, something a little larger, maybe. Yeah. And try to just kind of go over the whole bike, I guess. I mean, go back to my trusty Windex that I'm almost out of. I'm just going to, I mean, I don't know what, if there's much point in this, but, and it's not actually that dirty. I'm going to, I mean, just for a good measure, I'm going to go over the whole bike and I scrub it down with the rag. But like I said, it's really not that dirty and it's not that greasy either. Probably never got lubrication of any kind. So that's the, the plus side of that. It looks nice when, when it's, uh, you know, got, got some, Got some Windex on it, kind of shiny. But like I was saying before, I wonder what year this is from. This looks like something I would have seen in my childhood from the 90s. Let's raise this up. If anybody happens to be familiar with this Huffy, oh, let me know what you think. What year is this from? There's the logo, if that helps give you a hint. So I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, I, I, we didn't grow up with the high quality bikes that I, <laughs> given my daughter, I don't know if you guys know it, but she has a nice bike. Let me show you. She has an early rider. Here it is. Early rider Belter uh, 20. So it's a 20 inch tire 
Um, and and in, another, in another one of my videos, I showed where I converted it from a uh, belt drive to a, a cassette. She loves this bike. We ride it all the time. I got like some Alibaba oil slick handlebars on it. Um, it's awesome. And it has like nice, nice uh, disc brakes or cable pull, but man, they stop super good. Like way better than any cable pull brakes I've ever dealt with. Uh, Maxim tires. It's pretty, pretty sweet for a, a six year old bike. And I didn't pay a lot for it. I have some of the videos on it uh, on my channel. Got a new saddle for it from the factory. Anyway, all I was trying to say with that is when I was a kid, I got bikes more like this, it, except for when I got older and my dad and I started building BMX bikes, you know, but before that it was always, you know, department store bikes, which I appreciate, you know, they're the, they're, those are the bikes that got me started in biking and uh, got my love of cycling as a kid. And I loved cycling when I was a kid. I, I didn't call it cycling, I called it biking, I guess. Um, I would ride all over the neighborhood. And you know what's funny is I do something now that I did even when I was like, whatever, 10 years old or 11 or whatever age I was. But when I was really young, I used to, I, uh, <laughs> there was a real estate agent my family knew and he had like printed out maps of the whole Port St. John community. Anyway, one time I asked him or I asked my mom to ask him if I could have a map and he gave me a map of the whole community, which is like, I don't know, there's like 10,000 people. So it's not very big. Um, it's all houses pretty much. It's, it's called a community. It's not even a city, but anyway, and I, I had that map printed out map on an eight by 11 paper and I attempted, and I don't think I ever actually did it, but I attempted to ride every single road on the whole, in the whole, in the whole community. And so I would mark it off with a highlighter on all the streets that I had been to. Of course, this is in like, you know, early nineties. This is way before smartphones or GPS or anything like that. And as a kid, I especially didn't have access to any of that. Whoops. Here's a little bit more goo. I'm not, I don't know if I should even bother with that. <laughs> Probably not. Let's just leave that alone. Um, you know what we could do? We could give it the good old pledge from, uh, that other channel. Let's get his name. Uh, Bike farmer, <laughs> why not? Um, so anyway, I still do that now, but I use Strava. So Strava, um, of course, if you use Strava every time you ride, which I do, because I just love the data, even though I'm not, I'm not going fast 99% of the time or anything like that, but I like to keep track of all the places I've been. And uh, Strava has what's called an API, which is like kind of a, like allows third party companies to plug into your data if you allow them. So uh, there's other sites that you can plug in and it'll show like a awesome overview of all the places you've been. You can zoom in, it's a map, by the way, it's a map. And it'll show like all the places you've been in a certain color. You can make them like transparent with like overlays of the satellite view or the map view. And uh, I, I do that and I really, really treasure all that data. Like looking at all the places in Europe, all the places in America that I've rode. Maybe, maybe I'll flash some of that on the screen so you can see what I mean, but uh, <laughs> I really love that. So I've been doing a lot of the same stuff since I, I'm 42 years old now, since I was like 10. <laughs> it looks great now, doesn't it? It's all shiny. I'm sure that's not gonna last once this uh, stuff dries off though. Anyway though, um, I wanna wrap this up today. I know I didn't give the Evapo Rust the time that it it probably wants, but that's going to have to do because it's 1144 and I have to work tomorrow. So let's grab my toothbrush that I brush my teeth with. Just kidding. Um, my God, I have a mess here. So I'm not going to clean it up tonight, but tomorrow morning, I'm going to tomorrow at lunch break. I should say I'm going to, uh, clean it up. It did get some of the rust off. I can see there's like this, like gray look to it. It's not all brown anymore. Uh, I'm going to use this brush just to kind of try to go over the whole chain to knock loose. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Knock loose as much rust as I can. That's coming out pretty good, actually. I have to do both sides. Hopefully I'm not spraying you with the, the rusty evapo rust. Okay, that's gonna have to do. 
Now I'm going to, I'm gonna keep that evapo rust because it says you can use it multiple times. I'm gonna take this out and keep this. I'll put it back in some jar or something. Let's come over here. Whoa, 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 whoa. That table's dirty. Let's get some of this crap off of it. Okay. Let's use a slightly cleaner rag. Well, not slightly, a totally clean rag. Get this a little bit drier. Okay, it's still a bit rusty. <sighs> I mean, it's moving fine. And it's only a single speed. I guess we'll throw it on. It'll be fine. It doesn't look beautiful. But it's moving nice. And I checked the... Um, I checked the chain with the chain tool off camera before I started the video and it is within spec so it's a good chain. No reason to waste it. Okay, that's gonna have to do. Let's put it back on. Uh, well, let's throw that wheel on first. where I'm not doing good today. Uh, putting things where they belong here. Oh, I should have vapo rusted these guys. <sighs> Better just leave them because I was gonna sand or like buff all the rust off, but then it's just gonna re-rust because it'll be exposed steel. We're just gonna let it go, it, it'll be fine. Um, let's put a tiny bit of grease on there or something. Uh, just put some WD-40 just to get it where it's smoother, where it's threading a bit smoother. All right, let's put that chain on. I know there's one other thing I need to fix as well. Uh, the handlebars were not straight. driving me nuts. Never had so much trouble on the, with this before. There. Oh, Didn't use a screwdriver, just kind of muscled it on. Now it's going, now it's going to be fine. There. Good. We still need to drive the pin the rest of the way. Where's my tools? Where's my tools? I need to um, I need to check myself right now. Calm down. I know it's getting late and I want to get this done, but um, I, I need to stop rushing. I feel like I'm starting to rush. Getting that kind of jittery feeling. You guys ever get that where you're like, gotta get this done, gotta get this done. And um, it's not fun to feel like that. And I like to enjoy my time in the garage, using my hands, using my mind. Um, it's a little bit hard with this heat to enjoy it, but Calm myself down. 
You ever feel that though? Like when you're kind of rushed and you're just like, ah, I gotta get this done, it's getting late. Okay. Not only that, you can get hurt, you can screw up, you can do sloppy work, all that negative stuff. All right, I think we're pretty good there. So then I check on the back side. Yep, that looks good. And if it doesn't move, which it doesn't, it's nearly seized, then you kind of bend it like that, and now it's loose. Exactly. All right, now let's put this on the chain ring again. There we go. All right. Now we just need to set the, uh, the tension. Where's that uh, 15 millimeter we had before? Okay, we don't want it as tight as it was before. The other thing you want to look at, uh, you're tightening the chain with this, you know, the wheel slides. That's only one of the things. The other thing you want to look at is to make sure this wheel is centered in what they call the chain stays, which are these. So you want it to have the right tension and you also want it to be centered as good as possible. So I'm pulling a little bit on the back here. I'm also trying to keep it centered. And then I'm just gonna snug, start snugging this down. Oops, it moved a bit. All right, and that's probably pretty good on the chain tension. Yeah. You don't want it to have like any spots that are, well, yeah, that's actually too tight right there. This chain ring or something isn't totally oh, uh, even because it has parts that are loose and then parts that are too tight. So unfortunately that's just kind of goes with these cheap bikes. So I just loosened that and then retightened it which should loosen, loosen the tight spot. Now the loose spot's gonna be even looser, unfortunately, but there you go. That's how you want it. That's good. All right. Tighten it down. My first bike as a kid was probably a coaster, coaster brake as well. Not to say this is this kid's first bike, but. All right, I think we're good. There we go. All right, there, okay. Last thing I think is to straighten these handlebars. So let's take this off of here. All right. Yeah, they are very crooked. Um, let's try to... Oh, yep, it just it's just moving by itself. There we go. Now, I'm also guessing that these are going to need to be rotated backwards because my daughter is six, but she's very a very big six, um, and I'm pretty sure this would be too. Oops, that's probably the fourteen. <laughs> this would be these bars are too high for her like this. They're they're going to be too high. Nope. 13. So I'm going to, that looks, well, let's see if we can do better than that. Sorry, I'm just trying to, 
straighten these bars the absolute best I can. I think that's it. What was I saying? Oh yeah, my daughter is pretty big, pretty tall for her age. So uh, I think this is too far. So I'm gonna loosen them up and, and pull them back just a little bit. More than likely he's about the same size as her. Okay, let's try that. When I see him, if I see him, um, we can, I, I can always adjust him more. Maybe it, if I bring the bike, I don't know if she's, I don't know if his mom's going to pick it up or if I'm going to bring it there, but, um, there we go, but I'll bring a wrench. Okay. I think this bike is ready to ride. Let's go outside and give it a test ride. Oh, I forgot to lubricate the chain. Duh. Let's do that real quick. Put it back up. All right. We're going to give him gear oil. Experimental gear oil. Here we go. Grab another rag. Oops, forgot you can't pull, can't ride the, run these back. Kickstand. Feels like that needs some lube. Ooh, that feels good now. Hey, that woke it up a little bit, I think. Eh, I don't need to do that. Okay. Uh, let's wipe off some excess. Not that I think there is any really. It's so rusty, it probably absorbed it. Come on. All right. Now let's give this thing a ride. Go open the garage. Bike is walking away. All right, let's go for a ride. It's alive. I wouldn't say it's a great ride, but it's working. We're moving. Crank arms are very tiny. <laughs> Don't do a skid. All right, there you go. The bike is pretty much finished and ready to go. I'll probably give it another look over, maybe another test ride, but I think we're pretty much good to go. It rides, it stops, it's a bike. So what are we, an hour and 25 minutes? Oh my gosh. I'm sure nobody's watching to the end, but if you are, thank you. And even if you didn't, thank you. Of course, you wouldn't see this message then if you didn't, but. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching everybody and uh, stay tuned for the next upcoming videos, video videos. I hope it's going to be on these uh, calipers. So I'll probably, probably install those tomorrow. I'm so excited to get them on and see how much and if they improve the stopping power of that bike and, just, and also the quietness. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching and have a good night. It's 12.04. Bye.